You've been widely depicted as skeptical of research, are you? Not at all, and I, I'm really delighted to be able to answer that. I think that uh, perhaps the most important aspect of advertising is how you say what has to be said, because by and large, by and large, we can find out what to say. I am a very, very firm believer in research, but you owe a responsibility to research. After research helps you find out what to say, you owe it to research to say it in a fresh and new way. Now, in hair coloring, we did the research and we find out, as I, all our competitors found out, that women most want to avoid looking artificial when they color their hair. Well, everybody found that out, so everybody got, began to say you will look natural. But we said it, and everybody else was saying it. And when everybody says the same thing, you don't stand out. And therefore, your impact is tremendously reduced, and there's even confusion and, uh, and uh, misidentification. Well, all we did was nice and easy, with virtually no change of any kind, not even the content. We wanted to say natural. We said, how can we say it in a fresh way so that it's no longer hackneyed? And we changed that natural bit to, it lets me be me. Now, that is virtually saying the same thing, but it's also saying what you are is pretty good, and we're going to make the most of it for you. Well, I would say in the last five years since this campaign started, with virtually no other change of any kind, there hasn't been a Nielsen that was lower than the previous Nielsen, and today it's the biggest selling hair coloring, I would say, in the world, and it's uh, gone beyond anything in the Clairol business. Do you find that in packaged goods advertising, research plays a bigger role? Not at all. Not at all. I think it plays a big role in everything, but it plays a limited role. Mm -hmm. It plays the role up to a point. It plays the role of telling you uh, what's in the market, what people think, and so on. But how to touch them and reach them is something that research was never meant to do. It's a lazy way to do it. For example, many years ago, Levy bread, Levy Jewish rye bread, uh, uh, came to us and discussed with us the using of the old, uh, uh, no, well, it was the old uh, uh, world telegram that I have in mind now. They didn't have that on the schedule at all, but they had the Post, the New York Post. Now, I asked them why, and they said, well, the New York Post has an 80% Jewish circulation. This is Levy's Jewish rye, obviously. Therefore, you have to use the post. Well, that's a bit lazy thinking, because if you delved into it a bit more deeply, you know that Levy's Jewish rye is a great Jewish rye, but it's a packaged Jewish rye. It's done up in, news, in uh, wax paper, it's sliced, and then delivered to the store. At that time, things were a bit different now, but at that time, in Jewish neighborhoods, you could go to your local uh, Jewish bakery at the corner and get a bread fresh out of the oven and the taste was absolutely marvelous uh, and uh, I suggested that we put it in the World Telegram which had a uh, majority of uh, uh, Gentile people as its circulation they didn't know about the corner bakery and it was a perfectly good bread but they wouldn't know about it and therefore be very happy with it and we changed and our sales went up but the trouble with research is that you can be so, so easily superficial about the information you get. I think after you get the information from research, you've just begun your work. And I think we are fairer to research by having this attitude, because we don't ask research to do what it was never meant to do, and that is get an idea. From whence came the line, you don't have to be Jewish. Hmm? Well, there's a whole interesting story with that uh, that I, I, would, I would like to tell you, that we always uh, called it, they used to call it, uh, Levy's rye bread. Levy's and I said, let's put Jewish in. Let's call it uh, Levy's uh, Jewish rye bread. And the, uh, the man uh, from the client said to me, well, let's not do that. He said, the people are liable to be anti-Semitic and, uh, and liable not to like that word Jewish. And I said, for goodness sake, your name is Levy's. <laughs> people are not going to mistake you for a high Episcopalian. <laughs> Listen, Bill, uh, now we're at the point. Do you think that research inhibits good creative work? I don't think so at all. As a matter of fact, 
I think that uh, uh, a good creative man demands great research, demands a good account executive, because he doesn't want his efforts wasted on a lack of knowledge and on the, uh, uh, on the false premise, as I said before. What about clients? You've been depicted as fairly intransigent as far as permitting client changes in advertising. Well, are that, you? Not, no, no. That's a, I don't think it's my nature to be that way, but it's a myth that grew up. And uh, I guess it was, uh, it was good ammunition for someone uh, competing with us. I don't know, but uh, uh, that's not true. What we do do, I, I think that uh, any agency that doesn't stand up for what he believes in, that doesn't have convictions about his work, is not going to do great work because work without conviction won't sell. Somehow or other, when a man writes an ad, what he feels somehow gets into the tone of that ad. And I would hate to be responsible for advertising I didn't believe in. And I think it's bad business. So what we do, we always say to the client, uh, after all, it is his money. And he has to make the final decision. But we owe it to him to tell him what we believe and why. And we think that out of a reasonable discussion, the right answer will come. And we've had very little problem with that. What about the future uses of advertising? I am personally now trying to use those skills in areas outside of the advertising uh, business itself. I, I think advertising is a form of persuasion. It happens to be used by business, but it should be used in almost all other areas where communication is important because we have developed a skill in persuasion which, is for, which can form public opinion and nothing is more important to the world today than the proper developing of public opinion. We have this energy conservation. I'm going to be working with some people in Washington on that. Why shouldn't we put our skills in persuading people and in creating public opinion to work on behalf of causes that are important and that we believe in? Clearly, you have changed a great deal of the way we expect advertising to be presented. Is advertising better now than it was? Well, I think it's better. Uh, I think it's better for many reasons. Uh, I, I think that uh, they've seen uh, good advertising work better than poor advertising mm -hmm. does, and we are very practical and pragmatic people, and uh, for that very reason, we, we tend to get better all the time, and we're practicing it more often. But, you know, John, I, everybody talks about change all the time. I think advertising, essentially, the persuasion part of advertising, is going to be the same 100 years from now. Because the man with talent will be able to persuade, and the man without talent won't, no matter how much knowledge you bring to him, no matter what mechanical devices you have. We have a great television complex in our offices now. We've moved, and we were able to take advantage of all the new inventions. But I've got to tell you that those new inventions aren't going to great, uh, create a great new idea. And I keep telling that to our people, that little thing sitting by yourself and getting an idea is far more important than all the technology in the world.